Hello, this is Amanda DiMadaros with Esri Canada, and today we'll be discussing my favorite newest functionality for Enterprise 10.7.1, Batch Publishing. As a publisher or administrator, you can now add cloud storage locations, file shares, and database connections as data store items in Portal for ArcGIS. You can also synchronize the data store item in layers within Portal. Any changes in content, feature classes, and tables will be updated during the sync which means I don't have to keep overwriting my services. And as you can see, I have quite a lot of services. Publishing them individually would be a daunting task. So I'm very excited to show this with you today. There are a few database administration steps to consider before implementing this workflow. One, ensure that the database has a user with only read access to the subset of feature classes and tables within publishing in bulk from the data store item. In the services and the programs, my logon user currently is a built-in user. For best practices, it is recommended to use the organizational domain account. Specific privileges vary by database, but the user needs the ability to connect to the database and select only tables and feature classes to be published. Right now in my pro document, I'm already connected to an SE database. But if you need to edit the privileges, just right-click a feature class, go to Manage, Manage, and go to Privileges. Right now you can see that my logon account has Select, Insert, Update, and Delete. So now that I know that my feature, service, my feature layers have privileges, which I put to all of them already, I can go right into my portal. I've already logged into my portal because I have uh, integrated Windows authentication, which automatically logs me in. And I've gone to the content tab. Remember that you must sign in as a member who has privileges to create content and register data stores, which is an administrator or publisher. I'm an administrator of my portal. From the My Content tab of the content page, add an item. And now in 10.7.1, you can see that you can add a data, a data store. I'm going to give it a, a name. And you can see that there are three types, a folder, a database, and a cloud. And I'm going to click database. And I'm going to give it a tag so everybody else in my, uh, in my organization can find it. Remember to use useful tags. I'm going to just save it in my default folder for now. And if you click next, you'll be prompted to provide a connection to the server sites to access the data. So that would be your SDE data file. In Pro, there is a default location that is set. So if you ever want to know where it is, it would be in your documents, ArcGIS, projects. And then wherever your project is named, it'll have that SDE connection file already there. Open. And you can see that I have my connection right here, it has my authentication mode, which is an operating system administration. So it has my username for my machine in there. And you'll be pr prompted with two options, same as publisher database connection or a new connection. For the same as publisher database connection, if your client and federated service has access to the data in the same shared folder, leave the default setting as same as publisher folder path. If you have duplicated data in two different file shares and you want the client and the ArcGIS server site to reference different file shares, choose a new path under the server folder path and type the path to the second file share. I don't have that, so I'm just going to use the default same as publisher database connection. And click next. You can see that it validates the hosting and image server. Great, and now I can add the data store. And now it's been added as an item within my portal. It's also a bit added as an, as an item within my server manager, which I'll quickly show you. It's almost the same as registering a database within server. Go to site, data stores, and you'll see it's right there. But you'll also notice that you can't edit or delete it from here. Everything is managed within the portal now. 
And if you go to Settings and scroll down, you'll notice it's right there. And if I ever need to update the password to this database, I could do it right here. If I want to remove it, I have to edit the server, and then I can remove it and save it and delete it if I need to. You can also prevent this from being deleted, which I highly recommend. I'm just going to cancel this because I would like to continue. So now let's get right into the batch publishing. If you click the layers tab, you'll notice that I don't have any layers right now. So let's create some. I'm going to create a new folder instead of using the folders that I already have on my portal. I'm going to call it batch publishing. This is good to do just so you know which layers you've done this process on just so if you have to come back to it. And it will create a folder within my portal. Now it's asking me if I want to create a folder within my server site, so in server manager. For me, I think it's more useful for me to use the same name just so I know what is in that folder compared to what is in my, por my portal. And I'm just going to click use the same name and I'm going to start publishing. And now I started the process. It's going to create the layers for my data store. Publishing may take a long time to complete. If the database connection you use for the data store item has access to a large amount of feature classes and tables in the database. Remember that you must be the owner of the data store item to publish layers in bulk format. You must be a member of a role that has privileges to create feature layers in bulk from a data store item and publish service-based layers. Once my layers are all published, I'm going to have to ensure that I have editing enabled on the feature services for some users. So perhaps I would like some of my address points to be updated. You would also want to share the service to either the public organization or to some groups. That has to be updated afterwards. This process also defaults the shared instance pool, which is new at 10.7, into the shared instances. And if you wanted to learn more about that, it's a great blog article, and I encourage you all to read it, which I've included in my blog post. If Basically, in a nutshell, if I know that a published service will be popular, I can dedicate that service to an instance in the pool. So I can help my resources. Everything right now is in the shared pool. So it's lying in wait until a user wants to use it. While this is being created, I'm just going to show what that looks like within the server manager. Go to the services tab. I can see that the folder was created within my server manager. And each one of the services is currently being created. If I click one of them, I can go to the pooling tab and you can see that it's right now in a shared instance. I can dedicate it the instance pool. So I can dedicate how many instances I want. Similar to past versions of server, where you can up how many instances you would like to use, and then you would just have to save and restart it. And that's all you would have to do for these services. And you can see that my layers were already created. That was really quick. Much quicker than me doing this individually. I can also sync any of these layers. So if I have any edits or if I'm removing a layer, it will match it every single time I sync this. I can also delete all of them if I want. And that's all there is to it. Be sure to check out other new functionality for Enterprise 10.7.1 in the What's New document. And happy batch publishing. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and comment below. And if you want to find other Esri Canada demos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. 
Thanks for tuning in.